welcome. You're watching Voice News Network. My name is Pragya Devan and let's head to today's top world stories. Italy is all set to bring toughest rules against COVID-19 in Europe. Amidst the violent protest over the weekend in Rome over COVID-19 requirements at workplaces, Italy now gives a green signal to the toughest measures against COVID-19 in Europe. Starting October 15th, Italy will become the first European country to require the so-called Green Pass, which is the digital or paper proof of vaccination, immunity or a negative test in the past 48 hours, mandatory for all places of work, both private and public. But Italy's new measures are not welcomed by many residents. Late Saturday, some 10,000 protesters marched through the streets of Rome and several hundred broke off to storm the headquarters of Italy's largest union. But interestingly, on the same day the violent protest erupted, Italy quietly reached a goal it set in March to fully vaccinate 80% of the population over the age of 12, with 85% having received at least one dose. And while Italy is quietly reaching its target in vaccinating people, the situation is grim in Russia where deaths related to COVID-19 are surging. Deaths related to COVID-19 are all-time high in Russia and public health officials are now pleading with the tens of millions of people to get vaccinated. But the government is not planning on any kind of national lockdown to curb the fourth wave of COVID-19. Officials has warned that country will pass 30,000 cases per day as daily death toll approaches 1,000. According to official figures, Russia recorded nearly 30,000 cases and 957 deaths on Monday. Throughout the pandemic, the country's coronavirus task force has attributed roughly 218,000 deaths to COVID-19, but there has been continued criticism that the tally is an undercount. And China pledges 290 million US dollars to protect nature in developing countries. China has pledged about 290 million US dollars to establish a fund to protect biodiversity in developing countries. Speaking to a UN conference in the southwest Chinese city of Kunming, President Xi Jinping says that China would put in 1.5 billion yuan and called on other countries to contribute to the Kunming Biodiversity Fund. Other leaders who spoke to the conference on Tuesday included Russia's Vladimir Putin, Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, among others. Texas governor bans all COVID-19 vaccine mandates, including by private businesses. Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order on Monday to prohibit any entity, including private businesses, from enforcing a COVID-19 vaccine mandate on workers. He also called on state lawmakers to pass a similar ban into law. The move comes as the Biden administration is all set to issue rules requiring employers with more than 100 workers to ensure that their employees are either vaccinated or tested weekly for the coronavirus. Several major companies, including Texas-based American Airlines and Southwest Airlines, have said that they would abide by the federal mandate. Abbott, who was previously vaccinated and later tested positive for COVID-19, noted in his order that vaccines are strongly encouraged for those eligible to receive one, but must always be voluntary for Texans. Now let's head to the stories making waves in Canada. Starting with Canadian-born David Card, who is amongst the three winners of Nobel Prize in Economics this year. Guelph, Ontario-born David Card, with the University of California at Berkeley, was awarded one half of the prize for his research on how minimum wage, immigration and education affect the labor market. Card wins the Nobel Prize alongside Joshua Angris from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Dutch-born Guido Imbens from Stanford University for their framework for studying issues that can't rely on traditional scientific methods. And a man is fatally shot in Brampton. According to Peel Region Police, a man has died following a shooting in Brampton in the early morning hours on Tuesday. Peel Region Police say that they were called shortly before 1 a.m. to an area near Dixie Road and Peter Robertson Boulevard. They say officials found a man in life-threatening condition. 
Investigators say a suspect fled the scene of the shooting in a red vehicle and missing persons bureau has now taken over the investigation. Toronto Public Health shuts down Etobicoke High School in first COVID-19 closure of the year. According to Toronto Public Health, Silverthorne Collegiate Institute has been closed temporarily following a COVID-19 outbreak. The closure is effective from today and all students will be moved to remote learning. According to Ryan Bird, spokesperson for the Toronto District School Board, a total of 11 cases have been linked to the outbreak. Four of the infections are considered resolved with seven still active. Bird says that the closure could last up to 10 days. And it's time now to know what is happening in the world of entertainment. Bollywood actress Bhumi Pednekar bags a role in Red Chili's next film. Bhumi will be seen as a journalist in Red Chili's entertainment's next film called Bhakshak. She will be essaying the role of a journalist who tries to uncover a horrific scam prevalent in Bihar. The film will be directed by Pulkit, who had earlier directed Rajkumar Rao star of web series Both Dead or Alive. And coming over to Hollywood now, English actor Will Poulter is all set to play Adam Warlock in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. According to Deadline, after teasing his appearance at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Will Poulter has landed the role of Adam Warlock in the hit franchise. Poulter has been busy on the TV front. Most recently, he appeared in the acclaimed Amazon miniseries, The Underground Railroad, with his credits including The Reverend and Detroit. He can also be seen next in Hulu's limited series called Dope Sick. And that is it in today's bulletin. Subscribe to VNN's YouTube channel for more news and updates. Thanks for watching.